In this video, let me introduce you to a very interesting Chinese actor, Qing Hao. Hi, you're watching Avenue X, where a junkie on good storytelling shares her thoughts, knowledge, and occasional weird ideas on stories and how they're told. I was initially trying to do the second video on an actress because odd number male, even number female, that is at least how Chinese traditional culture looks at that. And I kind of want to keep to that, but then the bad kids got too popular and Qing Hao now is much more at the forefront of people's mind in the drama land and in the entertainment business. So I decided I'm gonna make a video now about this actor. He really does deserve a specific video just on him. Qing Hao was born on May the 19th. 1978, in the city Shenyang, in the province Liaoning. This is a northeastern city in China, so that's a cold part of the country. Dongbei in China is very famous for cold weather, for people who have very hot temper, yeah, in contrast, and the dialect that's supposed to be super infectious. If you go to northeastern China and live there for a short while or if you have a friend such as a dormitory friend that you will come across in university and live with that person for a while your accent is gonna totally swing to Dongbei accent. Qing Hao graduated from the acting major in one of the most prestigious acting academy in China, the Central Academy of Drama in Beijing in the year 2000. In this same year of graduation from the same acting class, there are some super popular actresses, actors working today in China. For example, Zhang Ziyi, the most famous film actress coming from China, currently internationally. Also the actor Liu Ye, who has been in many very high profile films and television series. Also the actress Yuan Quan, who mostly works in theaters, comes from Beijing opera background, but also has been in quite a few dramas in recent years. So that is like a all-star class. And compared to his classmates, Qing Hao kind of didn't get very far especially in the early stage in his career. After he graduated, there was literally three years blank period where he never acted in anything. Not the drama, not the film, not theater, nothing. He did get offerings and scripts, but he didn't like any of them, so he stayed dormant. Later in some interviews that I've watched him talking about his earlier career, there's mentioning that he does come from a family, that is relatively financially pretty well set up. So he's not super worried about money in terms of not getting work for three years after graduation. He also grew up in this very typical big Northeastern family that everyone is super cheerful and injected quite a lot of positive energy into him. So he wasn't super worried about any of that. Then in year 2004, the film he stars in Qing Hong, Shanghai Dream, became his first recognized work. It is an indie film or art house film, depending on which part of the world you come from. I think the US tend to use the indie independent film more, whereas coming from Britain, at least in my film school, all our professors call it art house. Anyway, Qing Hong is that type of film and it's directed by Wang Xiaoshuai. It went to Cannes. So it's his first encounter with the French Film Festival Cannes. From then on, maybe it's due to his own preferences, but also just the type of opportunity that comes his way. He started to act in more and more art house indie type of film, and he starts to build up a reputation of a really good actor. The directors he works most frequently with are Wang Xiaoshuai and Lou Ye. Both of them are very well known in Chinese film industry as the independent filmmakers. In the filmography of Qing Hao, starting from early 2000s, he has been in many, many such films and I will not go through them one by one. So I will only pick out the ones that have really strong influences, have made some kind of recognition somewhere and kind of pushed him up the stairs of becoming one of the iconic current working, his age range male actors who are Every time you mention his name, you think about art house and independent film. The second high profile independent film in his career after Shanghai Dream is Chun Feng Chen Zui de Ye Wan that happened in 2009. English title Spring Fever. It's directed by Lou Ye, also starring Chen Sichen, Zhang Songwen, Tan Zhuo. Because this film looks at some very sidelined 
people in the society. The LGBTQ community in China's setting, so it has a very sensitive topic. And it's kind of the area that independent films love to look at. I highly recommend you to check out this film because you will see the range of this actor in this film for sure. And then another five years gone by, another film, independent film, happened in 2014 called Tuina, Blind Massage. In this film, you will not just see Qing Hao, you will also see Huang Xuan, you will also see Mei Ting, Guo Xiaodong. It talks about a group of blind people together opening a massage parlor, which is a very common thing for people with visual disabilities to earn a living in China. This is a really brilliant film. The actors did such a great job in this film. And it's one of the films that really got me interested in the actor Huang Xuan. And I kind of had this hope for him since then to be in more stuff that are thought-provoking and challenges the actor's range. Although it kind of didn't really happen for him, but this video is not talking about him. So we're gonna swing it back to Qing Hao. In this film, he also plays a blind person and you have to go and see his performance. You will be impressed pretty much by everyone in this film. This film also got very high international recognition. It went to Germany for the 64th Berlin International Film Festival and got the Silver Bear for Outstanding Artistic Contribution Award. This is also a low years film. So you can see that Lo Ye, the director, really, really, really loves using Qing Hao. By this point, kind of 14 years after he graduated, he has already set up a reputation in the indie movie world. Pretty much all the high profile indie films during those 14 years have some of Qing Hao in it. Just when you think he is going to stay in that world forever, fate started to bring him more to the mainstream world and in front of a wider public audience. The change happened in the year 2017. In that year, he showed up in two dramas and one film, all kind of mainstream. The two dramas, one being Shahai, Tomb of Sea, which is a spin-off series coming from the very popular franchise of novels, Lost Tomb, in which he stars Wu Xie, a character who has been played by many actors. In the same year, he also stars in the 12-episode short series coming from Ai Qi Yi, the crime drama Wu Zheng Zhi Zui, Burning Ice, still one of my favorite crime dramas till today from Chinese Dramaland, which is like a precursor to this year's super popular The Bad Kids. In this drama, he plays a policeman called Yan Liang, and the drama is set in northeastern China, Dongbei. So it's his natural habitat. And I really loved his character, enjoyed his performance. If you still haven't seen this drama, please go and watch it. I also did make a video about it. If you're interested, you can check it out here. At the end of 2017, the film Yao Mao Zhuan, The Legend of the Demon Cat, went into cinema. It's directed by Chen Kai Ge, led by Huang Xuan, Liu Haoyan. I also made a video about it, so you can also check it out if you're interested in that. It is a pretty special film, very mainstream, but slightly controversial in places. I still do love a lot of aspects of it, at least visually, it's spectacular. Although he is not the main character in this drama, he only stars a section of it. He still did a pretty good job and started to make more audience realize <laughs> there is an actor called Qing Hao who has been working for, by that time, 17 years in this industry, getting many nominations, many awards, and many very generous and high praises within the industry, but still staying pretty unknown to the mainstream audience. Afterwards, he went back to indie films, and one of the higher profile one would be 2019's Feng Zhong You Duo Yu Zuo De Yun, the shadow play, also directed by Lo Ye. This is very visceral, very controversial, had a lot of difficulty going into cinema and um, very sort of cutting at the very edge of censorship type of film. If you haven't seen it, I highly, highly, highly recommend you go and find Feng Zhong You Duo Yu Zuo De Yun, The Shadow Play. It also features many familiar actors who actually have been mostly popular in the mainstream world, but who have delivered performances that are Wow, like you would not believe it's them when you watch the film. Including Jin Boran, including Ma Sichun, Song Jia, and Chen Yanxi also stars Zhang Songwen. So you can see these two actors have already worked together multiple times through their career in a span of 15 
years more. And it's a great thing that they finally showed up together again in this year's suddenly got super popular Aichi short series 12 episode The Bad Kids. 隐秘的角落 I think from now on when people listen to this song they will have uh, sweat running down their spine This year it finally is Qing Hao's ear. Previously, it's his ear in many years in the indie film world. Everyone knows in the film industry, Qing Hao is a great actor and um, you know, just throw him any dramatic good script role, he's gonna do it fine, but he hasn't been in that many high profile mainstream work. Right after the Bad Kids finished airing, another drama on Tencent starring him and Li Qing has already started running. As you're watching this video, this drama has only just aired into its second week. I probably will make a video talking about this particular one. But this is a super mainstream production. Very, very mainstream to the point that you almost feel he doesn't fit in. Because in a way, although The Bad Kids is a drama, 12 episodes, it feels very cinematic. The way it tells the story, the way it's paced, the camera language, it's just like an extended film. When you think back at Wu Zheng Zhi Zui, The Burning Eyes back in 2017, it's also a very cinematic drama. So in terms of being a very pure drama drama, Jin Xiu Nan Ge, The Song of Glory that is going on currently, is probably his first super drama drama. And because it's still in the early stage, it's very hard to say how well this drama is going to do, whether it's going to bring him more attention. But I am really happy that at least he is in more stuff for us to see because films, especially independent films, still have very small audiences and difficulty of accessing them. So you're never gonna get that much attention and that much recognition in the public's mind if you always stay in the indie film world. So I'm happy for him that finally at this age, 42 years old, he started to get more attention. In the weekend I just passed, he's in Happy Camp from Hunan TV, also with Ding Yuxi and Qin Lan together promoting their works. I think it's his first this type of entertainment program he's been on and it's totally due to the super popularity of the bad kids. I feel like this perhaps is a little bit late in terms of getting fame and exposure for an actor but also I think it is due to our fortune that he's been in the independent film world for that long producing some very high quality and will stay there for decades to come work. Had he not chosen that path, had he gone the very commercial path, he probably could also do pretty well, but then we would not have those works there and have some of his just brilliant performances recorded on camera. I do hope because of this exposure he gets more roles and he can have more choices in different types of scripts, no matter in film or in drama. Another thing interesting about this actor is apart from his professional fame, the only thing before the bad kids that got him into public's attention was his marriage to the veteran singer from Taiwan, Yi Nengjing. If you've paid any attention to Asian entertainment business for the past I don't know, two, three, four decades, you will know her name. She is 10 years older than Qing Hao. They got married in 2014. During the filming of a Yi Nengjing's film, they were in Turkey and he secretly set up a proposing event with flowers and by the ocean with friends and asked her to marry him. At that time, Yi Nengjing has divorced and gone out of her first marriage. She also has a son. So there are many interviews floating online about what happened in this particular relationship and how they got together and blah, blah, blah stuff. But when they got married and announced it, that is probably a lot of people's first time of hearing the actor Qing Hao's name. If you've never paid attention to indie film world, you would go like, who, who, who is that guy? Qing Hao, who is him? I've never heard about him. An actor from China, a nobody, married Yi Nengjing, who is 
much more famous at the time and um, 10 years older, you know, it's not like a common thing that happens in Asia. <laughs> not saying it doesn't happen, but for sure it happens much less likely than an older man marrying a younger woman. Because I watched this previous work at that time, I really liked him as an actor. So when they got married, I was like, cool, that looks like a very interesting couple. They look great together. And I was like, if they're happy, you know, who are any other people to say this and that about their relationship. By June 2016, they had a daughter, Xiao Mi Li. And because Yi Nengjing is currently in the Mango TV's program, Cheng Feng Po Lan de Jie Jie, there's more and more talks about her, about her family, also because Qing Hao's bad kids also happened this year. So they are now very much at the forefront of discussion in all kinds of entertainment news. And they've also actually attended a entertainment program filming their private life and her life with her daughter, with her husband, Qing Hao, and her husband's family, the Dongbei family, the parents. Um, yeah, there are actually a lot of footage about their private life somehow in this world. It's just very interesting that all the things come together, uh, especially this year. So that recently, due to the joined popularity of Yi Nengjing being in that program and Qing Hao being in the back hits, they did a stream. <laughs> Probably the first live stream he ever did in his life. And it's also floating on internet. I don't know if anybody English subtitled it, but it's out there. If you're interested, you can search and find it. So inevitably, once you get more popular and also you associate with a, another popular person, there's more attention coming towards you. There have been a couple of years after they got married because Qing Hao hasn't got higher profile work out there, people tend to not using their best languages for this couple. And the world of paparazzi and gossip is always unkind, mostly to people's private life. This year, they both got more attention due to what they've been in. I do hope their private life is not super invaded by the sudden sort of rise of attention. And in terms of what they're like privately in their life, you know, a younger husband, an older wife, a wife has already a, a son who is close to adulthood and uh, have now she has a much younger daughter with a different man. Whatever happens in their family, it's their business. I only wish him all the best luck in his private life, but also in his career. I care about that more. I want to see him in more great scripts, great work, playing more diverse, interesting roles. There are just some really interesting extra factors about this person that makes him very rich with story as soon as he come on a camera lens. Some people just have that. It's very hard to gauge quantitatively what it is, but you feel it when you watch him acting. So at the end of this video, it is my sincere wish that from now on, Qing Hao is going to get an even better career, going to get offered with even better scripts of all sorts. And he can provide us with more brilliant work that we can all look back on many years later and still find those work meaningful, entertaining, and being happy about the fact that we are born into this world at the same time that this person is present so that we didn't miss the great stuff that he's brought into our life. Thank you for watching Avenue X. I'll leave all the links I can find related to his work in the description box. Welcome to check them out. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.